Today we're tuning up our patron Tigersmith Glissa the Trader Deck. I'm your host Joe Cherries. And I'm your host Carl. And we are the Nitpicky Nerds. <laughs> that's kind of it. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, if you want to support the Nitpicky Nerds, including Kuro, because he's here and he's uh, got painted nails. So Patreon.com is the way to support the Nitpicky Nerds directly. Go to the website, click one of the things, get perks, support the nerds, and this channel gets bigger, better, faster, and stronger. Cool Stuff Inc. is another way to support us. This way is indirectly. See, they are a website where you can buy the magic cards you were going to buy anyway, believe it or not. And using code NERDS. Code NERDS. When you use code NERDS, then you will be supporting the Nitpicky Nerds and you'll get 5% off your order. So not only are you supporting the nerds, you're supporting yourself. It would be silly not to use code NERDS. Exactly. You can also go to Dragon Shield and get the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. Good sleeves. Get excited. Best sleeves, sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. There you go. Get hype. Best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. They they're literally the best. We use them on every single one of our decks. I have not sleeved a deck in another sleeve in 10 plus years. It is insane just how good Dragon Shield is. And guess what? There's an ad in this video for Moxfield.com. You will never be able to predict where it is, but try in the description below. You will be wrong, and if you get it right, you will have obviously cheated, but I will pin your comments to show everyone that you cheated. Exactly. Just, just so everyone knows. And happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today. All right, this is this is our uh, series, our, probably our longest running series. This has been going on since the beginning of the nerds. If you want to go watch some low quality videos, <laughs> go watch me and BZ in a plastic bag <laughs> as we tell you what to play. This is what we do. We take a patron submitted deck and under their restrictions, we upgrade this deck. Now, I want to mention that something we've started doing more recently with these upgrades is the upgrades aren't all about power. We do focus a lot on power and getting this deck functioning better, but we also focus on fun on this channel. So some of the upgrades aren't just going to be to make this deck more powerful, but also more fun. What are the limitations? What what are we stuck with today? So the limitations we have for this deck is that there's going to be power level 7 and no combos, right? So it's going to be about the synergy, making sure that the commander is like, you have it on the field and she's doing what she wants to do. So, hey, even if you lose, you know that you really got the work in that commander. And we have a $600 budget. Which we're not going to go over. Um, I mean, I, let's be completely, I'm going to be completely honest. I could have added, to stay within the $600 budget, I could have added a buy you and still been under budget. That's how good I did on this budget. So we have to do in every single one of these commander tune-ups is read the commander so you know what this deck is doing. It's Glissa the Trader. Black, green, green for a legendary creature, Phyrexian Zombie Elf 3-3. First strike, death touch. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you may return target artifact from your graveyard to your hand. So we want our opponent's creatures to be dying so that we can return our artifacts. And we want artifacts that put themselves in the graveyard so that they can easily be returned. All right, so we have to do the one thing we do for people who are watching who are not Tigersmith. We have to tell you what this deck was doing already. We're going to tell you the best, best five cards that were already in the deck. And the first one is Necron Deathmark. I have become a huge fan of this card personally. Same. Just... Five mana, flash creature, kill something, mill yourself for three, because we want artifacts in our graveyard. Mm -hmm. And it being an artifact itself means that you can get it back. Exactly. And I think you're, you're right. I almost forgot the literal best <laughs> right, part. Yeah. It, the, the cool thing about this it comes down, destroy something, and it, we're taking all of our single targeted destroy that you're going to see in this deck is not just going to be one for ones. Like, this is a, like a one and a half for one because we get a body, but right. we're going to trade that to a two and a half for one because... When we destroy a creature with this, we can get back uh, something from the graveyard to reuse with our commander. All right, and next we have Argenta Massacre. Five mana artifact from one of the newer sets. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may either sacrifice Argenta Massacre or discard the card. If you discard the card, you may destroy a permanent on the battlefield that's equal or less mana cost than that discarded card. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to play this five mana artifact, being an artifact super synergistic to our deck, obviously. We get on the battlefield. Uh, and then we want to be discarding, so we discard some artifact, okay, and as long as we have something to destroy that is lesser than that artifact, like, so say it's one, you can destroy tokens. Tokens are everywhere in Commander. We know we're going to see them. They're going to be on the battlefield all the time. And as long as we destroy something, we can return whatever that artifact was or a brand, another, any other artifact in our graveyard. So essentially, we're not discarding a card with this card. That's the that's what makes it so good in the second. It's, it's put a card in your graveyard for a short period of time, <laughs> for a short, for a little bit of time, and then put it back in your hand, but you get to destroy a creature. 
that's just great. And that's <laughs> probably like the best use of that card oh, you're going to find. It's horrible, right? <laughs> it's, it's, like, terrible. it's like, where are you supposed to play this card normally? <laughs> Glitch the Traitor. She's the only there commander that wants this card. <laughs> and then next we have Agent of the Throne. So that's one of the new backgrounds, right? Yes, it is a new background. And this one says when an artifact or creature dies, we're going to drain out our opponents for one. Well, guess what? We have lots of artifacts going to the graveyard nonstop. That is the main theme of this deck is putting those in the graveyard, getting them back out of the graveyard, and then, well, putting them back in the graveyard. And even though we're not super heavy on the Aristocrat effects, it's still going to just be that constant every single turn. Right? Yes, we're not heavy on Aristocrat effects, but all of our artifacts sacrifice themselves. Right. So though we don't have sack out, let's like say, let's uh, Quark Clan Ironworks. Those right. aren't in the deck. Right. We're not going to be doing that. We don't need them because we have tons of tiny artifacts that already sacrifice themselves. Mm -hmm. Our artifacts go to the graveyard by themselves, meaning it doesn't require the extra step of having the sack outlet. And then next we have Soul Guide Lantern. That's a classic. I mean, Soul Guide Lantern is graveyard hate. It comes in, exile card. Okay, fine. Sacrifice it, exile all players' graveyards. But the other half of the card is what makes it extra playable in this deck. Now we can sack it to draw a card, meaning it can be the graveyard hate we need, or it can just start cycling over and over again to keep drawing cards. Return it, put it back on the field, put it back in your hand, do it over and over again. The last thing we want to see is our opponent have a Soul Guide Lantern against us. No. That's <laughs> oh, it's very true. Yeah, our, deck, our deck is very weak to Graveyard Hate. We are focused around that. This deck mm. does not want to see a Rest in Peace. No, no. absolutely not. No. <laughs> and last of the best five cards that are already in this deck, Soul Shatter. Seriously, Soul Shatter is very, very silly in this deck. All of the things that make our opponents sacrifice a creature, each of them, that means three things are dying, meaning is three Glissa triggers. So these these cards are already three for one. So the, when you play a Soul Shatter, you get a three for one automatically. Now you return three artifacts from your graveyard to your hand, meaning you get a six for one with these cards. These I, I'm already we're already screaming at you on this channel to play Soul Shatter. If it was a six for one every time, we'd be screaming even louder. And it's like their six most powerful, like best creatures. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You're getting rid of their highest CMC thing. So like right. all their, their highest CMC things, like, and you return the best three artifacts from your graveyard to your hand. All right, and now it's time for the upgrades. This is for you, Tiger Smith. This is what you supported the nerds for so that we would do this for you. We got lots of awesome changes. We're starting out a little bit. We haven't been category, so we're doing some ramp to start. All right, to start off, we have Life from the Loam. So normally, you know, Dredge you would think would be pretty good in a green-black deck, but we're not really trying to Dredge in this sort of thing. We're putting in the cards that we want in the graveyard already by ourselves, so we don't really don't really need a Life from the Loam. Exactly. Every single artifact that we want in the graveyard sacrifices itself. That's what we're trying to do anyway. There is upside to Dredge in this deck. I'm not going to pretend like Dredge is terrible. You shouldn't play in this deck. But... The, de the thing is, we just don't need it. And on top of that, Life from the Loam, though fuels itself, we only have one land that really actively is putting itself in the graveyard, yeah. Inverted Catacombs. We do have, like, Inventor's Fair, but how often are you sacrificing that, right? right. And they and, wanted to get it back. Yeah, and, exactly, yeah. over and over again. It's just not something we need to do in this deck. In its place, Talisman Resistance, I know. We're suggesting a green Talisman on the nitpicky nerds, but... Artifact Ramp is a lot better in this deck than it usually mm -hmm. is because of all the synergy. The ability to return it from our graveyard to our hand so that we can replay it. And next, we're cutting Expedition Map. Now, Expedition Map, you might think, oh, just like sacrifice it, get whatever special land you want in the deck uh, to your hand, put it in the battlefield. But we're not really after that many special lands. Exactly. This wasn't a Cabal Coffers, uh, right. Urborg deck. We weren't mm -hmm. doing that. They, this this deck had a lot of utility lands and a lot of different lands. Just not anything I'm like, oh, yeah, we need to map for that. And right. the thing is, why would we play this? We're going to recur it. If we only have like two or three really good lands to get, I don't know. I don't really want to be recurring this over right. and over again. So instead, we traded it for Wayfarer's Bobble, which is actual ramp. It's actual ramp, yes. Right. And that, that's the big difference, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, we're only getting basics, but we're getting ramp. And we'll talk later. This deck only had four basics. We're, we're going to go up on <laughs> basics. So we're going to we're gonna add more so we can actually recur this like 70 times. Not literally. Eight times is the max we want to use it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, taking out Arcbound Ravager. So, obviously that, that, that card is usually good for Aristocrat artifact strategies because mm -hmm. you can sacrifice at instant speed. It also gets a little bit bigger, but that's not really the point. It's just the fact that you have this eternal sack outlet that um, you know, I mean, you'll be able to get back with Glissa all the time. But again, we're not really doing aristocrat strategies anymore. Yeah, it's not necessary to this deck. Uh, this deck did, I would say, had a sub-theme of mm -hmm. aristocrats where it was kind of there, but also kind of not there. Mm -hmm. So I just decided instead of like embracing it and going all in on it, I just stepped away from it and pulled away. And Archbond Ravager, as soon as you move away from the aristocrats, just does not get there. Right. For ramp, we added Burnish Chart. I am pretty low on Burnish Chart, I want to say. 
I'm building uh, this deck toward a. This is this is one of those cards that I talked about earlier, where I'm building toward a fun synergy built deck. And Burnished Heart, if I'm building toward power, is not making this list. Mm -hmm. But this deck is being built to be synergy and function well. And this is all this and Wafer's Bubble are the reason we added more basics because right. we can't crack Burnished Heart three <laughs> times. Uh, we can only crack it two times right. in our deck. And if we draw a basic, we lose out immediately. Oops. That's why we added more basics to this right. deck. <laughs> Phyrexian Scriptures, next cut. Uh, this is a long winded board wipe. That's like four mana, <laughs> got to wait a turn. <laughs> Everyone sees it coming. It's literally just a yeah. long winded. It's, it's a board wipe, but it has 50 more words on it. Right. So it's like instead of doing that, instead of jumping through the hoop, why don't we just play the best board wipe in the entire format? Toxic Deluge. Right. And so, and as I mean, as you said, we can already like go higher on the budget anyway. This is probably on the, like the higher end, but like it's just one of those good cards. Gets rid of the Phyrexian scriptures. <laughs> it's worth it. I mean, it's it's way worse. I mean, the, wait, I mean, yes, I would agree. Scriptures has more synergy. Toxic. Like this is kind of like like I admit it. I admit like the op what we just did in the last card was adding a like synergistic piece. I cut this synergy piece because it's so medium. It's more and, like a flavor piece. It, it's more like a flavor piece. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's very fair. Yeah. It put in this toxic day lose. I mean, sometimes you just sometimes. Sometimes you want to have the, the better flavor mm -hmm. synergistic piece. Sometimes you just want the better, like, overall card. And I think in this case, Toxic Day Luge is what we want. All right. Next, we have taken out Blood Money. So that's one of the seven mana new removal spell, uh, uh, new board wipes. Yes, for black. it's a board wipe. Um, but it makes all the treasures come to play tapped. Uh, we can't really have, like, treasure synergies because obviously once they get sacrificed, they're just gone because they're tokens. Um, but we took it out for something a lot cheaper. Yeah, well, we added in Wind Grace's Judgment, five mana, uh, destroy a non-land permanent for each opponent. That means we're going to, again, we mentioned just when we get these three for ones, if we destroy creature, 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 right. we don't even have to. We can also use this to destroy something like uh, a rest in peace that's in our way. But yeah. you can go creature, 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 rest, or creature, creature, rest in peace. And then we're also going to return stuff from our graveyard if we have a graveyard. I want to say about Blood Money, this is the last cut I made, um, and it could be added back in. There mm -hmm. are synergies in this deck. Uh, there are the, the Marionette Master and stuff like that sure. that were already in this deck. Um, those yeah. do synergize with Blood Money, mm -hmm. but it is a slow. They do come in tapped, but I, I'm not that high on Blood Money. I think it's slow, but I also see why. I see the merits to play in, in the deck. And then uh, next we've taken out Golgari Charm. This card just stinks. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry to all you Golgari Charm lovers. I'm sure BZ there's a lot of them. is sick in the other room <laughs> hearing me just bad talk Golgari Charm <laughs> and crying because BZ loves this card. And it's in like his fun Carado deck. This card's mm -hmm. bad. I'm just, I'm very low on it. Mm -hmm. I know all the little things it can do. It's, it's, it's just not there as I don't feel like it's strong enough for Commander personally. Well, they even want to like give minus minus and regenerate too. Like in in this sort of deck, it's just it's just not helping you out. Medium, very right. medium. If it was an artifact that you got back every turn, then sure. But that's just not how it works. It's, 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 instants aren't artifacts. Right. Those, <laughs> those, those, turn, they, turns out we turns don't out. have instant artifacts. Yet. We don't have that. Maybe technology. maybe someday. <laughs> Next time for X, it comes around. Um, but instead, we traded out for something a lot spicier. Vona's hunger. Oh yeah, and I want to give full credit where credit is due because mm -hmm. Dylan from Play to Win, I was using uh, your deck. Your casual Glissa tech, I believe it's called A2 Glissa. Uh, <laughs> I believe that's the name of the deck. Uh, it's, you can check out, uh, I believe, Cam Jam is his name on uh, Moxfield. Check out his decks, and actually you should just check out their channel, period. They have an awesome channel. As that's where I got the suggestion from. Um, I mean, I was looking at his deck, I'm like, hey, what can I add? Bonus Hunger is just kind of good. It's that, it's, it is a, it's a bad card when it's not ascended. But Correct. But in this deck, we can make up for it not being ascended by having our commander, right? Because we can go, True. oh, okay, three things sacrifice, get get three things back. That's going to make up. That's going to make this bad card into actually something decent. We're never yeah. we're never going to want to play <laughs> three mana each player sacrifice a creature. That is not a good magic card. No. But what we get the upside is ascend. Really easy to ascend in commander. It, Very easy. It takes, if, if you're on turn five or more, you're like already ascended. It's I like, mean, we're also in green too, right? <laughs> I so. mean, yeah, exactly. We're going to have, we have so many artifact permanents. Like right. this deck is filled to the brim with permanents. So, once we're ascended, everybody sacrifices half of their creatures. Not you. Everyone else sacrifices half the creature. Rounded, rounded up. Rounded up. So if they have one creature, sacrifice Gone. that creature. And if no. they have, if they have three creatures, sacrifice two, two of the creatures. It's it's. This card is actually. I think this is just like. like I just added this for another video because I want to talk about this card in the future. Mm -hmm. I kind of just forgot this card existed until I saw it today. 
we kind of forgot Rivals of Ixalan existed in general. <laughs> that's, a, no, so, in all fairness. that's completely fair. I mean, yeah, Rivals of Ixalan is very forgettable. Uh, yeah. And next we've taken out Tragic Slip. So Tragic Slip, I mean, normally on the nitpicking nerds, we're praising, you know, interaction, single target removal. Especially, especially one mana. We, right, we, yeah. We talk about it all the time, but we think one mana interaction is super strong and important, even when it's only a one for one. Right. But instead of, like, having to rely on other people's removal or another removal spell from our end in order to turn this on to guarantee it kills anything, uh, we chose to do something that's, like, a bit more uh, synergistic and just a lot better. Yeah, focus. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, we don't want to have to... It, we don't have to have to have something else happen for our removal spell to be turned off. Right. Um, and we took out the Aristocrats theme, which would turn this on more reliable. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we added in... And now, I completely forgot this character existed, uh, but it is awesome. Locust... Oh. Heavy, what is it? Destroyer. Destroyer. Locust yeah. Heavy Destroyer. That is the name of this magic card. It's a real magic card. I promise you. Promise. It's a real magic That one over there, I did not make that image. It's not <laughs> fake. That is real from the Warhammer set. One black, black, black. When it's the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. We can sacrifice this, which is going to be very big because we sacrifice it. They sacrifice three creatures. We have three Glissa triggers. I'll return this every single time to my hand. And two more artifacts. Now we're getting card. Not only is this like a removal spell that, you know, it's not, like, broken because sacri- right, big right, right. sacrifice a creature, they get the right. choice, they're going to sacrifice tokens. Right. But you're getting card advantage from this silly spell. It also has Unearth. If you really want to Unearth, you have to. if you have to, yeah. but you're, just, you're probably just going to return it with its own trigger 90% of Absolutely, the time. Absolutely, because you don't really want to exile it from your graveyard, but, I mean... No, you want to keep using it. You right. want to <laughs> <you wanna> keep <laughs> right. bringing, bringing it back to your, your head. Yeah. Give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> give it to me. All right, moving on, we have Duplicant. We took that right out of this deck. Duplicant, good card, and if you really need it, I could see putting in this deck in certain situations where, ex- say you like play against a heavy Ulamog meta where everyone's playing <laughs> indestructible <laughs> Ulamogs all the time. I would put Duplicant in there. And, I, I guess if you have to. If Yeah, but and, but I really don't want Duplicant because it exiles. And right. ultimately, even though this card is decent we can recur it, mm-hmm. I want destroy effects so that I can keep recurring things. And I want my destroy effects on creatures when I can, especially... Artifact creatures. Uh, Noxious Gear Oak, enter the battlefield, destroy a creature, gain equal to its power. Boom. Or toughness. I can't remember which one. One or the other. One or the other, yeah. It, it definitely one Definitely one or the definitely other. Definitely amongst those two options. It, it's, yeah. de- it's not both. It's right. one. It's definitely one. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, and also, it's just like, there's not a lot. There, I mean, there's pretty much like no life gain in this deck, but... I mean, the fact that it just becomes stapled onto this creature that's already, like, a two-for-one anyway. We're already going to put sure. this in the deck. If this didn't say life game, we put right. it in the deck. So yeah. we, we take the extra... We take that life game where we can get it. Right. Ratchet, oh, Ratchet Bomb stinks. Uh, cut that <laughs> card right out of the deck. I, I'm not a fan. <laughs> yeah. I get the idea. Maybe you're repeating it, destroying tokens over and over again. You keep all the tokens off the field. I'm just not a fan of this card overall because if the threat isn't tokens, then this card takes w- is way too slow for Commander. Yeah, because you have to like pump mana to make it like reach a certain. Yeah, we well, uh, don't have to pump any mana. mana. Every turn you just tap it to put a counter on. Oh it. my god! But oh. now it's tapped. We have to oh. wait for it to untap. No, now we can no, destroy no, no, it no, once. No, no. Uh. That's so much. Time. It's just it's such no. a it's so slow. Yeah. Like it's, it's good at getting tokens right away. Sure. Other than tokens, I just think this card is is horrible. And again, maybe if you're in some token meta where it's like every deck is sure. playing fifty saplings a turn. Right. Um, but instead, we took it out for pylon. Yes. Oh, big fan of pylon. Uh, this is. A just a removal spell. Four mana, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Surveil two. Now that's a terrible card. But again, I like burying the lead on these cards. It's, it's got convoke. It's, it's got convoke. It's so important. It's to the card. real good. And we're not the most creature every deck. We're, we have twenty five. We're not low. We're not high. We're kind of just right. like in that like middle ground of creatures. But for every single creature we have in the battlefield, we just get to pay one less. And the fact that this can be free. I love and this card. It's free instant speed, and you get to destroy the creature and surveil. And then if you surveil like a, an artifact, so people are just like, oh, let it resolve. It doesn't really matter. Then you surveil an artifact that you actually want in the graveyard. You can get that right back. Yeah, exactly. That's a great yeah. point because the, the spell does all resolve at once. Right. Though it resolves in order, mm-hmm. state-based action is never checked, and that trigger is not going on the stack until exactly. it's fully resolved. Meaning, yeah, like John said, you mill over what – oh, look at the top card of cards. Oh, Ooh. there's my best artifact Ooh. in my deck. Put that in the graveyard. Put, and now with the Glissa trigger, target it to put it back in my hand. Card has a lot of little synergies. Ooh, is that a burnished heart? Let's put that right in the graveyard. <laughs> All right, this <laughs> next one, I am convinced. I am absolutely convinced that he he wanted to put in a mirrored in equipment in Click to Bar One because yeah, Varak Battlehorn is a, equipment from mirrored in that does nothing. Nothing. It basically has no synergy with her deck. None. It's it doesn't. It, I guess it makes Glissa so she'll never die in combat. But what I don't what, what Glissa's not meant to attack. That's right. not what Glissa does. Right. Don't do that. Don't. Yeah, I mean you can. It's reasonable to attack. Like death touch, I guess. Yeah, I she's mean, not. She's not getting blocked, right? But it's right. like, 
what I think was meant to be in its place is another Mirrodin equipment that is actually good. <laughs> Viridian Longbow, which makes our creature tap to deal one damage. Right. Now, every so th we have Death Touch on our creature. Tap, destroy something. Okay, that makes it a little removal spell. Jump through a hoop. But then you return the artifact. Makes it that much better. Like, I wouldn't, if I had a Death Touch commander, yeah. I wouldn't just play Viridian Longbow. Like, right. It's not where I want to be. But mm -hmm. if I have a Death Touch commander that want to. When a creature my opponent controls dies, I get back an artifact. Okay, and now I want to play. Now you get it. And, you know, it's also flavorful because she is a Verdine Elf from Mirrodin. And yeah. Even though she is corrupted now, but this is before she was Oh, no. This no, is, no, this no, no, no. This is original corruption. Yes, this, yeah. this is the first corrupted one and not yeah. the new corrupted one where she is, like, incubating. Incu yeah, she, she's known for her incubation technique. And next, we're taking out Stinkweed Imp. So another dredge card where it's just, like, we're not... We don't, we don't need it. We don't need it. Our artifacts are sacrificing by themselves. Sometimes they're sacrificing for, like, value to kill another creature anyway, so we're just getting right back. Yeah, also I want to mention about Stinkweed Imp. Uh, how are you... So, we don't really have a way to reliably put this back in the graveyard once we dredge it, right? Right. How, like, or even one, before we dredge it, right? Because it's like, how... We, we, we've we now cut the the sacrificing synergies. Right. There wasn't even that much that would do it for Stinkweed Imp mm -hmm. to start mm -hmm. with. So Stinkweed Imp just was never going to end up in our graveyard unless someone attacked into it, which people don't want to do. So it clearly has Death Touch. So. Yeah. And your commander already has Death Touch. People weren't, but they're not swinging at you already. They, weren't, they already weren't yeah. swinging at you. We don't want Stinkweed Imp uh, in, in its place. Just a one form removal spell. Infernal Grasp, destroy a creature, lose two life, boom, bam, and return an artifact. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's really simple. This is basically a, a, a terminate effect, but when your commander adds in, draw a card onto it, yeah. makes it so much better. Being able to staple that ability onto just every piece of removal Everything. we have, it makes it just that much better. I mean, like, we're already playing decent and pretty good removal spells, but like you said, when you add, basically draw the best yep. artifact from your yeah. graveyard onto the card, oh, okay. Right. Then next, surprisingly, this might surprise some, but we're taking out Lightning Greaves. Um, normally, it's just like you want to protect your commander, just like at all costs, right? Or at least like you think so. But I mean, your commander's only three mana. It's easy to recast the first yeah. couple of times. Another thing about uh, a Lightning Greaves, we left in Swift Foot Boots. Uh, we, there is a couple of things we want to equip and put onto our mm -hmm. commander. So once we give it Shroud, it's kind of a pain in the butt because right. if we want to move yeah. it to put something else on, then, right. then at least they're vulnerable in right. that time anyway. I like the Hexproof over that. And also, I don't like playing Greaves and Lightning it, Greaves and Boots in the same deck when we don't want both the Haste and right. the Protection. The protection yeah. Because this deck doesn't want both the Haste and Protection. It only wants the Protection. So I don't mm -hmm. mind... I don't mind one. I think one is the right number for the stacks. I could see the argument for keeping both, but in this case, I, I thought it was right to cut the Lightning Greaves. Right. And instead, we traded it for Lethal Scheme. So oh. another... Bury the lead. Bury the lead on it. Uh, okay, so <laughs> it's a black spell. Uh, <laughs> and it's another removal spell that just, like, instant speed, wonderful, just fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <I get it. laughs> and, of course, in this deck, it means that you also get an artifact back from your graveyard. So Yeah, you're still burying the lead because this has Convoke! It has Convoke. We're, we're still burying the lead. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this thing has Convoke. Uh, same thing as before. It's literally Pylon. This is a better version. Stop. Creatures that can vote connive. They Maybe we can knive. discard artifacts. That's so strong. That's great. <laughs> We're turning our spot removal into card advantage. And that's really what the strength of this deck is. That's what Glissa, that's Glissa's actual strength is your spot removal. All Actually, not just spot removal. All of your removal all of it. just be, becomes so much better because it becomes card advantage. It's all, like one for removal is card disadvantage because mm -hmm. you, go to, you, you waste a card, your opponent uh, loses a card, but the other two opponents... They're even. Yeah, right. They didn't lose anything, meaning you're just down resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you get something back from your graveyard, now you're now you've removed something. That opponent's down a card. You're down a card, and they're and they're this equal. Wait, add the return. Now mm -hmm. I'm not down a card. Only that guy's down a card. Right. Exactly. All right. Now let's go over some card draw, card advantage. This deck already has a ton of card That's advantage a lot. in the form of. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Glissa is lot. just she's a card advantage engine, like yeah. ridiculously. Yeah. Good. But we had more card advantage. Uh, first thing we cut, Canoptic Spider. Our count on artifact creatures just isn't high enough for me to really go, I really want this card in this deck. Yeah, it just really wasn't helping us out at all. Um, and But, like, what we traded it for, I mean, when you just when you think about everything that we're doing in this deck, like, it's, it's just going to go ham. Yeah, I mean, if you were listening to all the stuff that we just went over and how we're going to recur artifacts over and over again, Mishra's Bobble, usually just a cantrip that you just, you know, oh, play it, sacrifice it, get the card back, and nothing really happened. You triggered, like, some things when you cast it, maybe when it died. But in this deck, when it's something, like, when you can return, like, four or five things, what it allows you to do is sometimes, like, you play that sacrifice creature, you, you're putting three things in your hand, and you can't replay your whole hand. Right. But if you play out Bobble, 
okay, now you've you're down, you got back down to your seven cards in your hand where you wanted to be, and then you crack bubble, and then you draw on the other person's turn. So now you're back up on cards, the mm-hmm. bubble's back in your graveyard, and you have eight cards in your hand. You somehow you snuck past your end step snuck right to, ha- to have that eight cards. And you know what's amazing in this deck is that like I mean, you don't have to be the only one that's destroying your opponent's creatures. Your opponents are sacrificing creatures, your opponents are destroying their other opponents' creatures, and you're just like, oh, you killed something over there? I'll just get this bobble back. It's yeah. fine. Oh, exactly. And yeah. Like you mentioned, like, and you don't have to be the one who board wipes either. Yeah. Because other players, just, there's going to come times when the board's too much, and Pilgrim's just going to board wipe, and there's going to be six or seven creatures destroyed. The six or seven triggers. You pro- then the you amount. Get your whole graveyard. It's, it's, Glusa does that. <laughs> you legit, you get your whole graveyard. It, sometimes it just happens. Sometimes there's just a board wipe, and you literally just go, all right. Whoop. And now my graveyard's <laughs> in my hand. Did I cast Praetor's Council? Nope. That was a board wipe. Nope. It was just a board wipe. So even though you don't, yeah, even though you're not going to be the one necessarily like killing something in order to get uh, Mistress Bobble back, you're going to get it back anyway from someone else. And <laughs> it's just going to be a value for you. I mean, so and you're, you might just pick Bobble sometimes. Uh, it's one of the easiest cards to cycle because it costs zero. zero. Yep. A lot of the other cards, they take some investment to cycle. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Literally nothing. All right. We also removed Evolutionary Leap. Again, Aristocrat theme just gone. That's pretty simple. I mean, I, I don't really like to go too much detail mm. in its place urza's bobble right. literally uh, everything i said about Ur- mishra's bobble now for urza's bobble but instead of looking at the top card oh this is big oh you look at a random card in their hand Ooh. so it does make sure you write it down okay just this as, is competitive it does just as little like these <laughs> it's weird it's weird how mishra's bobble and urza's bobble just don't do anything yeah it's, <laughs> what but, do they actually but like do? But, like, they're the only cards that do exactly nothing oh, but are good enough to play. They're so, they're so good. <laughs> they're, so no, good. <laughs> they're legitimately so good because the because they do nothing but cantrip. Right. And they're that type. Artifact. Such mm-hmm. an important type to magic. Like, these are, like, these are, uh, these cards are just staples of one of the biggest decks in Legacy right now. Eight cast. Yeah. Like, these, that's, like, these do nothing cards. They don't do anything. <laughs> are just out there absolutely in one of the best decks in right. Legacy. How silly. Like, in Mistress Bubble, I, it's so funny to me to think. Mm. It took years for that card to get discovered in Modern. Yeah. Years. Long But time. now it's just a staple. A super staple of Modern. Like, it was probably, like, four or five years into Modern's, like, mm. actual inception that this card was discovered right. as, like, a play. Now it's just, like, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's, it's in every. It's yep. in tons of decks. And then another card we decided to take out is Yawgmoth Thran Physician. Now, while that is, you know, flavorful because it is Yawgmoth in a Phyrexian deck, uh, we're not sacrificing creatures. Again, as we said before, um, a lot of the creatures that we have, we just don't really want to get rid of, uh, especially for what we're going to get out of them anyway. And we're also not doing, like, proliferate need synergies like at all exactly yeah but like you said but there's just not enough synergies with this card um this card is good it's very strong i'm not in like you can make the argument if you want to make a generically good version of glissa you can just put this in right but i again we're we're on a 25 creature count we putting some of our artifact creatures in their graveyard could be an advantage Mm -hmm. overall not really what i think i think this deck has enough card advantage that we don't need a generically good card draw spell like yawgmoth down position in its place morbid opportunist we're playing lots of spot removal. We're going to destroy things in other people's turns. If players destroy anything that isn't Morbid Opportunist, also draws you a card. I This card just turned now, instead of turning our spot removals into two-for-ones, which yep. Gliss is doing, now they're three-for-ones, yep. which is amazing. Like, so nice for us. Now, instead of, like, you know, we are just talking about how it's advantage for the other two players in a right. one-for-one, and we can make it even with Glissa. Now, if Morbid Opportunist is out now there, we're up a card. now somehow we somehow we <laughs> played we played a removal spell yep. and ended up with more cards in our hand. That's, yeah. that is now that's that is very wild. That is, <laughs> that is, that is, that is so wild. Like, all right, I will use a spell, and now yep. I have more cards. Did you play a card draw? No, no. It was a no, removal I just, spell. I actually yeah. answered something on the board. <laughs> and the next card that we're taking out is Moxfield.com. Because actually, we cut nothing from the deck at all because it's actually just the best card. We built this whole deck on Moxfield.com using all of its tools. Honestly, it makes it so easy. I was cross-checking with other decks on Moxfield.com. Cam Jams, check him out. He's one of the most followed accounts, one of the most viewed accounts on the whole website. Not as viewed or as awesome as the nitpicky nerds, but, you know, they'll get there eventually. Yeah. <laughs> one, one day Cam Jam will be one day. up there with us, but there's so many decks to cross-reference. If you want to build a deck, you could probably never leave Moxfield and end up with a super strong deck because so many great creators are putting decks in there. No matter what commander you're thinking, type it in, search it up, Find tons and tons of decks built around that commander and cross-reference to build your own version of that commander deck. Absolutely. That's where all of my decks go, all of the advanced search functions that you have. I mean, especially on their Twitter account. We're going to get you about... following. What, what is your Kuratsuki? Yep, Kuratsuki. <laughs> so everybody, go follow Kuratsuki. Follow the Nitpicky Nerds, too. Obviously, if you're not following the Nerds, I don't know what you're doing. What you're doing. You better, you, we're trying to. We're on a race to get to the first account to... 
10,000 10, followers. We're looking to be the first Ooh. one to 10,000 followers. Get Kuroatsuki to 20 followers. Okay, I'll, <laughs> take, I'll take that. I'll take that. I think he's got more than that, but I'm throwing shade for no reason. No reason. I don't know why I'm throwing so much Make shade. me the second place one. We'll, yeah. we'll keep second place, yeah. Let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nipiki near to Kuroatsuki. Right, right but, there. But if you let him pass us, you've, you've gone too far. <laughs> All right. Next cut. Another super staple of the format, and another one you could argue just should stay in the deck, but... Yeah. I, I'm too I'm too busy cutting those staples to make cool synergies. Skull Clamp out in mm-hmm. its place. Chromatic Star, which in this deck right. can draw just as many cards. Yeah, like, <laughs> so Skull Clamp, like, I mean, when you see the list, especially all the creatures that we've taken out, like, we don't have 1-1 one, one tokens that are dying immediately, right? You're not going to have a big turn where you're going, like, oh, let me equip it, I'll draw two. Oh, let me equip it, draw two over time. Like, that's just, that's just not what this deck is. Um, but <laughs> Chromatic Star, I mean, you're going to be able to, like, kind of... Color fix if you need. You know, it's only two color green, black. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, but, that's not really what it's here for. Right. But, like, you're drawing it over and over and over again every turn, basically. It, it's, it's a slightly worse Urza's Bobble, right? Like, right. Like, we, if we if we could play it, if there was, uh, so we have Urza's Bobble, Mishra's Bobble. Takasia's Bobble. If we, yeah, if we could have Takasia or Tokashia, I don't yeah. know what her name Tukasia's is. Takasia's Bobble. Is it Takasia? I don't know. Yeah, I so. I've always called her Takasia, but, oh, like, but I don't know. I also pronounce things phonetically and incorrectly all the time. So That's fair. T- Tokasia, Takasia, Takasia, what, whatever her name is. Let's get her Bobble, and then we can take out Chromatic Star. Right? But until then, we'll take Chromatic Star because it cycles just like those. Next, we have Canoptic Scarab Swarm. So this is another one of the Warhammer 40k cards, one of the Necron uh, deck oh, from the Necron deck, and um, what did this one do? This one got oh, this one it enters, exiles a graveyard, and you right. get you get you get one one artifacts equal to a certain something. It doesn't really matter because we have better graveyard hate that cycles and draws cards. That's Nile Spellbomb. Right. Where and the thing that's an upset about this over uh, what was already in the deck, Soul Guide Lancer, which we mentioned was one of the best cards in the deck, mm. is that this one comes down and it's going to cost you mana, and then you sack it and you pay another mana, but now you draw a card and exile a graveyard, so you can get right. both. Whereas when you're playing um, the Soul Guide Lantern, you choose one or the other. You oh, right, either exile right, right, right. graveyards or you draw a card. Mm-hmm. This one has upside on it. Um, you're gonna re- in, with recurring this over and over again. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Keep... It doesn't matter that you only hit one graveyard because then next time you hit the next graveyard and the next graveyard. We recur so many things. That's what the deck does. We're just never gonna have no hands. That's what the deck does. That's the, the deck. The deck is recur with Glissa mm-hmm. that deck. That, yeah. That, I mean, that we, one, if you ever notice when you submit a deck to the picking nerds, your commander is going to be a central part of your deck. I am not yes. going to. 100%. I'm, I'm not a CDH player. I'm not going to build you. I'm not going to take Thrasios and Timna and make you some pile. <laughs> and make this exact same deck. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to build you some pile. It doesn't really matter what the two commanders <laughs> right. are. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to build yeah. you. The commanders are going to be central to this deck. Yes, 100%. I definitely agree. Um, check out our decks on Moxfield.com. And Whoa, <laughs> whoa, no, it was two Moxfield ads. Second Moxfield ad, but this one's already over. Hand yeah. <laughs> um, all right, next we took out... Now, I know that th- this might surprise a lot of green players. Um, we got Especially Shigeki. the green players that watch this channel. Yeah. Um, we've taken out Shigeki, Jukai Visionary. I mean, this card's good. I mean, I'm not going to deny this card's this good, but good. I'm, I'm very high in this card on a budget and on a deck that needs a way to get a lot of card advantage in the late game. We don't need that. We have so much card advantage in this deck. For turn three forward, <laughs> it's sure. just card advantage. It, it's all the deck does. <laughs> yeah. The deck is all card advantage yep. all the time, so we don't need an extra engine like Shigeki. I love Shigeki. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I don't love Shigeki. Unfortunately, I just don't think it makes this cut because it it's filling the same role our commander is already filling. Right. So instead, we traded it for uh, Serenath Steel Seeker. Now this is an underrated card um, because it's it's a green artifact, like caring person. Yeah, right? exactly. It's like how many how many green artifact decks this? Well, there's Glissa. Glissa. Uh, Glissa. Again, no. probably no. This okay, so not even right. really. Just, the, just, just, <laughs> just, just, just this It's really just yeah. really this glissa. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we have this glissa, and that's about it. For like, there's a couple. I'm not gonna... that green red mi- mini Mishra girl from. Yeah, uh, uh, you mean mini, mini Urza? Yeah, mi- yeah, 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 yeah. The green red mini Urza. Yeah, yeah. that's also fair. There, yeah. there are some. They do exist, but there is a lot. This card awesome. is just absurd. Yeah, because when an artifact enters the battlefield, you essentially surveil. But you, there's an upside to that surveil. So that means you look at the top card and you can put it in your graveyard. But what the upside to this surveil is, is if it's if it's a land, put it in your hand. So, okay, look at the top card, draw it if it's a land. Otherwise, you can choose to put it in your graveyard or leave it on top. It's still a choice. It's not like right. just... This card is very underrated. Um, and I think it's because, like we said, there's not a lot of green artifact decks. Right. 
you should you if you're playing any sort of green artifact deck, I strongly suggest putting this in. I yes. know it's it's a creature in your artifact deck. Doesn't matter. I think it's that good. Yes, I would definitely give it a try. It's 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 underrated mainly just because like the strategy that it goes like, in is it, underrated. This card, but I've I've seen this card. Um, this uh, I watch a lot of aspiring spike streams, and this card mm -hmm. is he plays this in like some food list, and it's very yeah. strong. <laughs> Very, very strong there. All right, and then of and then another is just like, oh my gosh, Nipping and Nerds, what are you doing? How could you take this card out? Eternal Witness. We don't need it. We just don't need it. What's we, it going to return? Well, it's going to return an artifact that we can return anyway? Exactly. Exactly. So get out of here, Eternal Witness. Yeah, you're Eternal it's Witness. And actually, we added something just in its place that can do the same kind of thing. It's Dross Skull Bomb. It's one, and you can pay one and sacrifice it to just draw a card, or you can pay three at sorcery speed only to return a creature from your graveyard to your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is doing the exact same thing. Oh, actually, you also draw a card. So like you're also oh, yeah, you still draw a card anyway. You still draw a card either way. So this card is <laughs> just gonna good. it's gonna get us card range. We can keep repeating it. And it's it does Eternal Witness's job. It doesn't get back everything, I get it, but it's recurrable with our commander, which it taking out Eternal Witness, a non-artifact, and adding in draw skull bomb and artifact makes the deck tick that much better. Every cut like that makes the deck better. Glissa is just so good. <laughs> She's so good. She's oh. so good. I, I hadn't played against the Glissa deck until I played against Can Jam's deck. Yeah. Ooh, Cameron yeah. God. Ugh, this, I mean, yeah. Just even just going through the list and just thinking about like, wow, yeah, draw spell bomb is, it's just Eternal Witness, but better in just this deck. In just this deck. Right. I mean, just just this, because it's not better than Eternal Witness in almost any no, no, no. any deck that ever existed <laughs> except this. All right. So on to the next category. This is basically like our win cons because obviously we have. Endless value for days, but we have to like, I mean, actually win. You know. Yeah, I mean, even a BZ deck of infinite value, which infinite this is, value. needs a way to win the game. Right, right. <laughs> please let me free. Yes, please, BZ. I get it. You've drawn ten thousand cards. Can we please get it over? I get it. You won. You won ten turns ago. But can you kill us? <laughs> um. So we've taken out Bastion of Remembrance, three mana enchantment, bring in a guy every time a creature of yours dies, pain and drain. Right. That's 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 not what we want. I mean, we're just not a risk card anymore. Right. We've been saying that. And even then when we were, I just I don't feel like you, we were killing that many cards to really make this part. No, I, I got I if if I was going to like let's just say we were staying with the aristocrat teams, I'd rather mm. play something like a blood artist because right. we're killing more of our opponent's creatures than yeah. we are our own. Yeah. So we've traded it for yet another Necron card. At what point do we just like, are the Necrons the correct? It it just turned <laughs> out they made a black artifact centric deck. Yeah. And because Glissa is green, black, non-normal artifact colors. We're gonna take a ton of those black cards from that deck and just put them in. Gliss is a Necron, or the Necrons are Phyrexians, but however you want to. Yeah, they wanna they might it. as well be both. Whatever. Might as well. Um, so we put in a uh, Psychomancer. Yes. yes. So Psychomancer, two mana, pain and drain every time an artifact <laughs> goes to your graveyard. Yeah. So this thing is targeting. So it's not like it's just killing anyone, but. It's every single time this thing is gaining us life. This thing is just super, it's super annoying. And it just yeah. slowly, slowly gets there. This is the slow drain out, get back value. And this thing's an artifact. So yep. when it dies, sure, our opponents can answer this. We're just Your going, opponents will kill it. So they will. It will die. <laughs> and then you're just going to return it and put it back in the battlefield over and over again. That's yep. what's so annoying about this stock is that we're making our threats and wing cons repeatable. Mm -hmm. Next, we have taken out cranial plating. So, I mean, you know, typically you're just like, oh, make this creature giant because I have a bunch of artifacts. We're not winning by attacks. And then swing, but you're not winning by attacks. Exactly. This, deck, this isn't a tactic. And it does, there is a cool synergy. I mean, I, I BZ has mentioned it before uh, with one of his more budget decks where cranial plating and marionette master is just an amazingly True. silly combo. But True. that's not what we're doing. Again, we're not the we're not we're right, not sacrificing yeah, yeah. that we're only sacrificing the stuff that can sacrifice itself. Right. So it, even though it's a little wombo combo, I'm not interested in it in this deck. We're not again, we're not attacking this. Maybe deck. that's why Vorik uh, Battlehorn was in there, so it got trampled. Oh yeah. that's, so, that's, so, <laughs> that was just trampled hit for twenty seven? No. <laughs> I, I, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, well in its place we added Mind Slaver, which I mean this card is stupid to recur. Yeah. Six mana, and then you tap it, pay four, sacrifice it, take control of target players next turn. Now, a lot of you are probably used to being Emrakul because Emrakul is a very good card in this format. Mm. There's something distinctively different about this card. You don't get an extra turn after this one. You don't. When they take your next turn, you just don't get a turn after that. Which so is over. I control it, I do the whole thing, and I tap you out of mana. And then you pass. And then you have nothing to do because I have completely demolished you by wrecking your turn. Taking control of other players' turns is not fun. You know what you oh, do? Oh, God, is it strong. You know what you do on top of that? Mm. You swing with their commander, and then you block 
with uh, your first strike death. Oh, yeah, uh, anything. Then that creature dies and you get Mind Slaver back. You always, oh my god, this is true. <laughs> you will always get Mind Slaver back. Yeah, if you, if you will always get the Mind Slaver back. You will always get it back. Because if you have Glissa on the field, you have a first strike death toucher. All yep. I have to do is have any creature. For, she, she blocks it perfectly. Oh, that's a combat. God, we figured it out. Oh, it's such a good. Oh, that's, that's so, so good. strong. Oh, that's so good. I mean, if Mind Slaver was printed nowadays, not only would it like exile itself, but it would like make you mill half your deck, exile it, it and would, lose half your life. It would, it would exile itself. Itself, and they would get an extra turn after the two after extra that. turns. Just to, you'd skip your next turn just to, just because <laughs> you're naughty. <laughs> yeah. It, so basically, they get a, they get the, <laughs> yeah, next, exactly. the, the same thing in a yeah, one player yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We also cut mimic fat. Um, I'm very low on this card. I've tried it a few times. Yeah. I've I've seen it do things. I think it's really cool with Tristani, where you can mimic fat. You know, yeah. then Tristani and make an extra clone. Mm-hmm. It, it, it has mm-hmm. cool mm-hmm. homes and commander for sure. I'm not a big fan She's of it overall. One. Yeah. Revel and Riches, we're destroying tons of our opponent's creatures. Mm-hmm. Alternative win con for this deck. Right. And it's going to make us a ton of treasures to do more looping. We're like, our deck is going to loop so fast that sometimes yep. the mana won't keep up with the looping. True. Uh, and, I mean, it won't. And Revel, <laughs> it won't. Re- Revel and Riches can make that. So right. our, it does keep up at some times. And sometimes you're just going to steal a cheeky little victory with this card. Isn't it so cool to like destroy someone's creature and then you get like a Chromatic Star back and then you just play it again? It's just that's the whole deck. It's just it's uh, just great. Is, isn't it, did you just ask me if it was cool to play Glissa? <laughs> yeah, I think it's cool to play hey, Glissa. I would agree. Is this with version that. of Glissa cool? Yes. Oh my god. It is. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is it's actually uh, based on uh, Cameron's from uh, play. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, might have mentioned that a couple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, a couple times. Give, couple give times. him credit. He he. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I I, yeah. I I actually stopped giving him credit. I've mentioned him way too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're moving on to the land section. So this deck did not have enough lands. No. Like like I know it's green, but. It did not have enough land. No, no, not at, at all. Uh, when when we brought this in, so the first thing that we're taking out for lands is Thopter Squadron. Um, this character's bad. I think this character's just bad. I don't know what it was trying to do. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't. I, it's repeatable. It can kill itself by making Thopters. There's something here. I just, I overall, I'm not a fan of this card in Commander. Yeah. When I, I like. There are things to do with this card. Yeah, sure. But overall, I just, I look at them like, I, it just isn't enough for me to to warrant a spot in a commander like a full commander a full spot, right. yeah full card yeah. um and uh, and also hey not even like synergistic or you know any based on lore so it's just it's just a weird card this is this is random yeah, yeah. Uh, we added in snow covered swamp pretty simple mm-hmm. i mean this deck was uh you're going to see why we added snow covered swamp as the basic swamp in a second this deck only had four basics we had to wait for the bubble we had to burn a heart very important to up the base account when we do that cut Birthing pod. Get out of here, birthing pod. Get out we, of here. We only have 25 cards. We don't have a great chain. We're not going to build a chain around this what deck. What do we want to go to? I mean, we have... It does... I actually looked. It has a kind of neat chain where it goes, like, Necron, kill uh, into oh. the six mana, kill into the seven mana, uh, kill and into an eight mana, <laughs> kill. I mean, it's, it's, it, it does do that. It, it does do it. it yeah. uh, but that's I, that's not just not super... Turns out the deck does have a curve. It, but, but but Yeah, but because yeah. we built it that way. But right. Snow-Covered Swamp also in Birthing Pod's place. Spawning Pit out. Uh, what did we cut, Sean? What, uh, what strategy did we cut from this deck? Uh, I think it was Aristocrats. Yeah. <laughs> you would be right. You would yes. be 100% right. We mm-hmm. cut the Aristocrat strategy from this deck, so Spawning Pit can get out of here. Guess what? Snow covered forest in its place. Do you want to yeah. tell them what snow covered forest does, John? Uh, snow covered forest uh, is a basic <laughs> land. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it gets uh, targeted by Burnish Heart, That's... as well as. Um... What color is it? Tap for? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to bury the lead of the best. <laughs> the best we have, of both. Which is... is that it taps for a uh, uh, green. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just and it has a different name than regular forest. All right. Uh, we also cut tortured existence. We don't. This is this card. This card is fine. This card is good. This card is not for this deck. I yeah, mean. yeah. <laughs> there, there's other decks that goes in. You're, Madness. You're literally bringing like the cards back to your hand yeah. already, just from your opponent's creatures dying. You don't need to spend a black to have a, a creature in your hand to discard or reveal it to everyone just to bring another one back. Not worth it. Yeah, we can't make like Madness decks make this card advantage. We mm. can't make this card advantage. Right. This is not something we can do in its place. Oh, we actually added snow covered forest. Is that? Uh, uh, te- Tesser green mana. Yeah. Right, right. It's yes, that's all, right, that's actually right. all it does. Yeah. All right. So next cut, Hissing Quagmire. Okay, mm-hmm. Hissing Quagmire just... I don't like man lands very much. I'm not mm-hmm. uh, really big on them. Uh, there's not very many I play in Commander. Um, this one enters tapped, and yeah. I just... When are we ever going to activate this? Three mana, it can, you get a 2-2 two, two with Death Touch. You already have a 3-2 Commander with First Strike Death Touch. And They're not attacking into you already. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, when is this going to be relevant? Probably never. So I added Dark, Dark Moss Bridge. It still enters tapped, but it's an artifact... 
if it ends up in our graveyard, which it will some small percentage of the time, we can get it back with Glissa, which right. is an upside. On, it is definitely better than hissing Quagmire Field in this deck. Yeah, sometimes. Oh, it's, I mean, you could surveil. Yeah, you could surveil. You can connive it into the graveyard, and then you still have your mana, your your land for next turn. Exactly. Yeah. And then we have Woodland Chasm. We've taken out. Fine. It has types. We don't have enough fetches or things that right. care about getting types. To yeah. Care about it. So instead, we traded it for Dreadbore Pathway, which is just going to be the. Molo dual face lands. It, what do we call it? It, it, it is an MDFC. Yeah, it's, 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 it is an MDFC. But when we talk about MDFCs, we're not usually talking oh, right, about right, these. Right, but right. it is it is technically an MDFC. Mm -hmm. um, uh, these I I think the pathways. I don't play them outside of exactly two, two color colors. decks. Yeah. But yeah. in two color decks, I feel that they are an absolute state. Yeah, why not? Like perfect. Like they just yeah. like there's not like like you you're stuck on what like you're condensed on what you can play for yeah. lands. I always play the pathway in my two color decks. Yeah. High market out. We actually cut the aristocrats theme, believe it or not. <laughs> Wait, and in its did? place, we had a free roll. This mana base was amazing. Yeah. It came in with an already really, really good mana base, mm -hmm. diverse lands all over the place. So all I had to do was add snow basics instead of regular basics, and we got a free play on Field of the Dead. Yes. Just right in the deck. I mean, it was a free roll. I mean, the deck mm -hmm. was already built. Mm -hmm. It was like this was built to play Field of the Dead, oh, but right. for some reason didn't have Field of the Dead. Yeah, it I just didn't. didn't. I really just don't even know why. Uh, they might just not have had it, or um, that's fair. Or, I mean, everybody doesn't own every card. I, I true, should, true. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. <laughs> does, does you? Do you? Does everybody not own twenty field of deads? Like I got me? my field of the dead from you, <laughs> 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 like the, two months ago. <laughs> so again, the limitations of this deck was seven in power, no combos, and as you see, we Easy. did not have combos. But value engines. Out boy, the water. did we have synergy. We there. there will, we can spin our wheels. Like we yeah. will combo off. But mm -hmm. there is going to be turns where we can probably play like ten plus spells. Oh yeah. If you have the right little, we if you have the right yeah, wheels 100%. spinning. Oh, 100%. Like, yeah, our total budget was $600. Yep. We spent $91.49. Damn, Damn we're good. We're good. No, John, you'll learn. You'll, you'll learn. It's, <laughs> I'll get there. It's, I'll get there. It's, Damn. Damn, we're, we're good. good. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll get there. Original average mana value of the deck was 2.86. Now, watch out. I watch out because I took it all the way down to 2.85, a 0 0.01 value Ooh. that will be noticed every single game every you play. Every single okay. game. You'll be like, wow, it just runs that much smoother. <laughs> I cannot even believe it. Uh, wow, this Thopter Squadron really was slowing me down. <laughs> <laughs> total mana, uh, total changes to the deck, 29 overall changes. This deck came in. It was already pretty strong. I'm not going to oh, yeah. pretend like he didn't know what he was doing because Tiger Smith sent a deck that was ready to go. I just, I made it a little smoother. I made it a little more synergistic. Every deck, I, if, when I work on a deck, I'm more, I want synergy. The, yeah. This whole deck is just, it's, so it's, it's really good. Like, I remember uh, when we were playing with, uh, I remember playing against this deck and I was playing against uh, the stupid Flash Mirror. What, what's that? Oh, oh, oh Shimmer Mirror. Shimmer Mirror. One of my favorite games. Yeah, yeah. But forget that. You don't need Shimmer Mirror anymore. Throw Shimmer yeah, Mirror yeah. in the trash can. No, but the it, flavor text's so good. It gets, there's a better thopter. It's better. From Mirrodin. It's true. There is a better thopter. Not from Mirrodin. True. It is a weird face. It's a really weird <laughs> face. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't get like a special art. Because the we, face we, would just be even weirder. With a weirder face? I would have loved it. That would have been the kind of... I, so that, so instead, but when you don't get weird out, you just get more zoomed in there. So True. I don't enjoy yeah, it. I, I do not like extended art. Yeah. Well, and yesterday, we talked all about cool cards. If you want to check out the cool cards, click on that video right over there. No, it's over there, John. Over there. Yeah, it's yeah, there you go. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.